Hello YouTube and uh, back with an update here on the 66 Chevy Impala. As you can see here we have uh, some frame to bumper uh, braces here which connects the uh, bumper to the frame which I'll be working on uh, doing some powder coating and uh, these are actually areas that are never seen but uh, because the car is such in pieces I thought I would also recondition these parts here and as you can see this has a black spray paint which I recently uh, painted and here we have our rear bumper these are the uh, braces for the rear bumper here and uh, you can see there's just a lot of corrosion uh, rust and just build up of you know it just the environment over time these parts just corrode and uh, you can see there's a lot of pitting, there's dirt, there's debris. And what we're going to do is clean that up and I'll take you along for the ride here. And uh, these are just all the parts. I had to take everything apart so I could have access to it. And we have our Ryobi angle grinder here, which uh, makes good work of uh, cleaning up these surfaces. This is a 80 grit roll up pad that I'm using. A little bit on the aggressive side, it's removing the paint, but at the same time it also uh, streaks the metal, so it's kind of digging into it real deep. Real aggressive, but uh, it makes good work of cleaning your surface real fast. And throughout the video, you'll see I'll be trying uh, different pads here, different things which I feel which will work better for the process of me cleaning out the uh, <clears throat> braces here and uh, this is just black paint that was on here and uh, and underneath some areas of that black paint you will see that there is rust due to pitting but then again there are some areas that were maintained which just happened to be clean but we're removing all of that paint we're removing all of that rust and uh we're going to powder coat everything here. And the, uh, like I said, the Ryobi angle grinder makes good work of cleaning up these surfaces here. And uh, there are some areas due to how this uh, piece was made. It's hard to kind of get in with the angle grinder. But I have different brushes and different tools of sort that you will see me use to kind of get into hard to reach areas that are just angled in such a way to where the uh, angle grinder cannot have access to scratch the surfaces. But along with the work here, as you can see, in just a matter of minutes, that area is clean. And uh, what we have here now is our four and a half inch Ryobi uh, angle grinder. And uh, we're using a different pad here this i like it because it's not as aggressive but uh it does make good work of cleaning up the surface and it does not affect your uh surface layer as much as the uh 80 grit roller pad you can see here this kind of removes the pitting but it also in a way i would say polishes the metal <clears throat> now i would not use this pad as a dedicated polisher but it's just that the kind of metal that we're using it on it's such a hard surfaced metal that uh this pad here kind of smoothens it out and uh i'm at a 10 degree angle i would say i'm not pressing too hard on it and uh, it's cleaning these surfaces, but at the same time, it's adding a bit of shine to the uh, surface metal here. And uh, as you can see, comparing the uh, side that I did scratch and the side that I didn't, you can see that a lot of that pitting has been removed. Now in this section here, sorry for my fingers, uh, doing this with one hand, using the angle grinder, but this time I have a much more uh wheel here and this wheel is actually for cutting metal but uh with a five degree angle i'm using it to scratch the surface 
because uh, there was such buildup of rust and debris that the other pads that I were using uh, just could not scratch the surface. So I had to find something that, that was a bit more aggressive. And uh, what we have here is this wheel. And as you can see, with that slight angle, <clears throat> I am uh, achieving some... Uh, some work here and getting that layer removed and then after that is done I'll use a much less aggressive wheel to kind of clean up the areas which was not touched by this wheel here but yes there's a lot of sparks it's a real aggressive wheel it's hard and uh, you have to be careful how you actually apply this on your surface area because you really can dig into the metal here to where you can uh, just cause deep cuts within your metal and you don't want that. You still want a smooth surface. So I'm kind of just gently scratching the surface area here with this wheel. And as you can see, it's actually doing a good job. And uh, it's just a lot of buildup, a lot of buildup of debris. And this just makes good work of removing all of that debris before I actually use any other wheel to condition the surface area here. But uh, yes, this is the Ryobi angle grinder and slightly just passing it through and we're kind of getting some progress here before we actually can powder coat these parts here because you want to make sure that your parts are nicely prepped because that kind of dictates your final outcome as far as the quality of your work here you always want to make sure that your surface is nice clean free of debris because that powder uh, it sticks to the metal and anything in between that powder and the metal it kind of affects how the uh, powder will stick to that material yeah but as you see here slightly getting it done the uh, debris, the rust, everything is coming off. And we're moving along here. Now we're back with the uh, Ryobi grinder. And the thing I like about this pad here, it removes the, it's, a, it's aggressive to remove the paint, but not aggressive to where it scratches the metal. It kind of removes the paint, but it leaves the smooth smoothness of the metal the way it is. Now, as you can see here, everything nicely clean. There is a lot of pitting because, uh, like I said, this is old metal from 1966. And uh, I tried to get it as clean as I can before I start to apply the powder here. And as you can see, everything is nicely uh, shaved off here all of the paint all of the uh, debris and this is just another set here i like to keep uh, everything packaged because i'm working around so much parts that have rust and as you're removing that rust it's just flying all over the place and i would hate for it to fly over the uh parts that i have already cleaned and as you see here we're still using the uh rust retard here which I purchased from Amazon and uh, it makes good work of removing the rust. Now in this section you can see that we got our parts hung. I'm kind of doing a pre-bake here and uh, I'll apply my uh, powder which is the uh, Alien Silver from Prismatic and uh, we'll just let that sit for about 30 minutes but at the same time I like to play it by eye just to see how the uh, powder is a uh, sticking to the metal and what it's doing as far as how it's baking because we don't want to over bake it here we just want it good enough to where it kind of smoothly layers itself on that metal and it looks clean and now uh, we have the eastwood dual voltage here for the uh, work that we're doing now on this part you can see that our powder is applied and uh like i said i give it about 30 minutes but i like to play it by sight just to see how the uh powder is actually sticking and we have our alien silver here from prismatic and uh, after that silver i'll lay a light layer of clear also 
from a prismatic. And uh, we'll just let our part sit here little by little. We let it bake and uh, we, it's, it's a process and it's doing its thing from cleaning the metal to applying the powder and just monitoring it. Now, as you can see here, we have our clear powder applied to the metal. And we'll let that bake for like uh, another 30 minutes, I would say. But uh, just play it by sight. Always watch your part just to see what it's doing. Certain areas that are not, I guess, curing as other parts. You want to make sure that your lamps are angled directly to the part to where each and every area of that part is being uh, penetrated by the uh, heat lamps here. So we'll let that sit. And the thing about metal, it, it's a nice transfer of heat, meaning where uh, if one side is being heated, that heat just transfers to where the whole metal part becomes uh, heat active. So it kind of cures the powder everywhere. And what you see here is our final product. Our part is nice and clean here before we get it back onto the bumper. And then I'll probably do another video on polishing the uh, bumper because it's been sitting sitting in the garage here and uh, there's just a lot of debris on it. So before I assemble the parts here, I'll kind of do a buff polish on the chrome just to get it back to its shine but yes this is it youtube as you can see here our part is nice clean and uh much better and i feel much more comfortable and happy putting this back together to the car rather than to paint the car and would have to put that rusted old part back on but uh this is it here clean fully restored and uh, this powder will go a long way. It's very durable to where I can knock the two parts together and it does not chip. It does not scratch. And uh, it's pretty much stuck on there like glue. And this is it, YouTube. This is just the process on the 66 Impala here.